How's it going, fellas? Efren here at Evolution Diagnostics. Um, today, we are working on this uh, 2015 Ram 1500 with a 5.7 liter. And we are about to replace the uh, three-way bypass valve. That, that's how they call it, I guess. Um, here's the part number. Um, and the reason the reason we're replacing this valve it's because the check engine light is on there is a lot of guys out there on YouTube where they have posted videos how to remove the the valve but they uh, they just fail to mention that sometimes it is the bypass valve which is no good but sometimes uh, people replace the, va the valve and they still get the same trouble code and the reason is or the reason why is that that you know they still get a check engine light on when they replace the, the part it's uh, you know it's because um, there's two ways where the system can fail one of them is due to a defective part and then the other one is a software calibration or update on the engine control module which is right over there at the firewall So long story short, this guy, um, my customer, he just bought this truck from uh, my local dealer. And it's a shame that, you know, he just bought the truck and a week later the, the light comes on and we're going to replace the valve since I already uh, uh, checked for a, you know, a newer calibration for the module and it's up to date so I'm pretty sure the dealer took care of that already so we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace the valve and for that of course you need to remove your air cleaner box which is right there um, it's, there's not there, there's no screws or uh, bolts that hold the air box in place or air filter housing it just snaps into these pins right there one two three four so you just pull and it'll come out once you do that uh, the you got all the room you need to uh, remove this valve so Let's go ahead and get started. It's getting late. So, first things first, you go ahead and remove this connector. Um, let's see if I can. Oh, I'm gonna have to use this pick tool because sometimes the, the tough. Even if you press on to release the the latch, it won't it won't it won't release. So you pull it out. This harness, get it off. Um, same thing with this other piece right here. Kind of play with it. There we go. Now that we release this harness, if you don't want to make a mess, uh, it'll be a good idea to use these tools. 
Uh, you're going to need three of them, of, co of course. Uh, with these, you can uh, pinch the holes and kind of cut the the coolant flow. So we're going to do that. So this is how you do it. You remove the clamp. Get her, get her all the way, you know, or far away from the, the end where the hose is hooked into the, the valve. That way you can pinch the hose like that. That way you don't make a mess, but even with this, make sure that you have a container to catch uh, any antifreeze. That way you can probably uh, reuse it later. Of course, you're gonna have to, I don't know, use a shop towel or something to uh, screen all that uh, dirt, garbage that is gonna go along with cooling as it comes out. Um, and then uh, these hoses are not so, you know, mechanic friendly. And what I say by that is, you know, you gotta, sometimes you gotta turn them. Kind of like, go left or right. Ah, because they are, they are stuck. So you get a turn. Don't put too much pressure. Because um, you can damage the hose. Um, and then you do the same thing with the other one. So now that we have our uh, hose clamps out of the way and we pinch our hoses. Um, we're gonna remove the hoses out of the valve and for that let me set my flashlight where place where you guys can see kind of like that and we're gonna remove our hoses Him loose by moving them left to right. Once you do that, you just pull them out. So with our hoses out of the way, as you can see, you don't have to drain the coolant or make a mess by pinching the hoses. All your coolant, I mean, you're gonna lose a little bit, but not a whole lot. So with the, with the hoses removed, now uh, we're gonna we're gonna loosen up or remove those. Uh, uh, there's two bolts holding the uh, the bracket. You know when you buy the new pump or valve, it comes with the bracket. So. Grab a 13 millimeter socket or wrench and get them out like so. Spinning nice and easy.
All right, so once you get, you get those bolts out of the way, you don't have to go underneath. You can do it from the top, just with your hand, you know, you just push the, the fender liner out of the way and that'll give you a lot of room to work around and then just get it out. I don't know if uh, buying aftermarket, uh, you know, if buying this uh, valve aftermarket, it's gonna come with a bracket, but uh, if you buy it from Chrysler, it's gonna come with a bracket. So just toss it away and put the new one in. All right, so this is a new part. As you can see, new bracket, ready to go. And so now we're gonna put it back in the truck, torque those bolts and put those uh, hoses back in its place and uh, should be good to go. So just uh, torque those, torque those bolts. I mean, you don't have to use a torque wrench, just snug them up, you know. Give it a little push when you finish, just to get them tight. We got it. So now that we have our uh, three hoses connected to the bypass valve, we're gonna go ahead and finish with the, you know, putting our electrical connector and don't forget those, uh, Don't forget to push those uh, those uh,
those two plastic uh, clips or whatever you call them harness ties and our last and that's it that should do it uh yeah everything good so um, let me just show you how much coolant we got into our container coolant catcher as you can see we will have a little bit of coolant but not much don't forget to put your uh, air cleaner back in back in the truck um, so that's it um, now let me show you why I changed the valve or why I decided to replace the the three-way valve so I'm gonna show you guys uh, the trouble code for this uh, 2015 Dodge Ram um, the code that I have P26 AV there's no information for it but if you click into these technical service bulletins right there click on there so if you look right here uh, there is a service bulletin you know it says that uh, you gotta reprogram the PCM just for you people out there DIYs if you're doing uh, trying to fix this same trouble code uh, and you replace the part you know with a new one I would uh, suggest uh, go ahead and buy OEM just because you know but if you <clears throat> if you replace it with an OEM part and you still get that same trouble code uh, you need to reprogram the PCM I hope this helps you know I'm just doing this to inform the public of uh, what the possibilities could be and if you replace the part you know the new one or you replace your uh, your old part bought a new one at the dealer and you're still getting that same code uh, your truck might be due for an update or software calibration for the PCM so keep that in mind